We take you now to Duffy's Tavern. Hello, Duffy's Tavern. Where do you eat meat to eat? Archie the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. Tonight? Well, uh, tell me, who is your favorite movie tough guy? Well, next to William S. Hart. <laughs> Now, now, the guy uh, uh, coming tonight is John Garfield. Yeah, Warner Brothers paroled him for tonight. <laughs> well, I got an idea from Duffy. Well, you see, our competitor, uh, Grogan's Bar across the street, has been taking away a lot of our business on a kind of, he's got a floor show there with a lot of chorus girls. Well, what have we got to equal 12 dames? Your fat wife, huh? <laughs> I don't know, Duffy. Somehow or other, 12 dames is more attractive separate than when they're lumped together. <laughs> well, anyways, my idea is to start a repertory company, see? Repertory. Where the show changes every week and the cast rotates. <laughs> no, not like Grogan's dames. Oh, <clears throat> this, uh, this will be real legitimate theater, uh... Well, we ought to do a terrific business. Uh, Eddie's been out all day passing out circulars, and... Huh? What play are we going to start off with? Uh, yes. No, not Oklahoma. No, not the voice of the title. <laughs> no, not Life with Father. It's a play that I wrote. Now, look, operator, you mind your own business. Everybody's <laughs> a critic. I'll call you back, Duffy. <laughs> So come in and meet Finnegan, Eddie the waiter, Miss Duffy, Sir Heathcliff Batterswick, Matty Malnick and his orchestra, our special guest tonight, John Garfield, and Archie himself, Ed Gardner. Uh, uh, Mr. Archie. Wait a minute, you back already, Eddie? What did you do, throw them circulars down the sewer? Well, only the ones we got customers working in. <laughs> Well, uh, did you leave a batch down at Schimmelbacher's Bakery? Yes, sir. And they promised to put a circular in every box. One in every box. Hey, that's a nice thing for the bakery to do. Yeah. Mr. Cavendish, the undertaker, offered us the same deal. <laughs> oh, that's swell. Good old Cavendish, although uh, I doubt any of his customers would be interested in my play. I don't know. They seem to act just like your usual audience. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, by, by the way, did you see that big sign Grogan's Bar put up on? Uh, what did it say? Tonight, new burlesque policy. Opening of sea season. Peaches Latour, guest of honor, will throw out the first bump. <laughs> and uh, boy, is the crowd flocking in. Well, I'll wait until my repertory company opens. I'll prove to Mr. Grogan that a floor show can rake it in without having to take it off. Well, that burlesque is pretty popular. Oh, I don't know. As I remember, I found me first burlesque show pretty dull. They ain't changed me opinion after 15 years of steadily watching them. <laughs> so leave Grogan do what he wants. How he runs his business don't interest me. Uh, hi, Art. Huh? I've just been over spying on Grogan's like you told me. Oh, yeah, huh, yeah. Finnegan? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, was there much of a crowd over there? I couldn't see. There was too many people in the way. Hmm. Well, never mind the crowd. Uh, tell me, how was the show? Oh, pretty good, Arch. But it didn't have enough variety. What do you mean? Uh, well, they had five strip tees. Uh, there was five strip tees acts, and every one of them was a dame. Well, that's probably on account of the manpower shortage. Uh, <laughs> Uh, how about the, uh, the costumes, the dame's costumes? Was they any good? Ah, uh, she was nothing to them. <laughs> you know, I felt so sorry for them poor girls. Uh, I was, I was one of them. One of them was so cold, she just stood there in the middle of the floor and shivered all over. <laughs> well, I think it's a horrible thing. It's a disgrace. The whole show ought to be pinched. Some of the customers were sure trying, huh? 
Well, wait till our repertory company open, opens. Mr. Grogan is going to discover that the public values quality above nudity. <laughs> find out, uh, find out that we have a better mouse trap right here in Duffy's Tavern. Hello, Archie, my sweet. My sweet? Why so confectionery, Miss Duffy? <laughs> oh, nothing. Uh, say, Archie, can you use an actress in your repertory company? An actress? Who? Me. Mm, uh, let me look at you. Turn around. Uh-huh. I want to see your profile. Uh-huh. Now, walk a few steps. Yeah, I guess in a pinch you could play a dame. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, by the way, what's with you? Today you want to be an actress. Last week you wanted to get married. Uh, what happened to the amour? To you? <laughs> If you were referring to my affair with Harold Harkle Road, it's all over. It's finny. Poof. Poof, huh? Yes. It's simply another case of love's flame dying down and leaving just an ember. An ember, huh? You know, with you, it seems to be forever ember. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Uh, you was crazy about the guy. Oh, I don't know. Little personality traits that has got on my nerves. Little personality traits, huh? Yeah. Somehow I just can't see myself going through life with a man who keeps refusing to marry me. <laughs> Little personality traits. Sure, well, that ain't unreasonable, but I thought Harold wanted to marry you. So did I, and so did Papa, and so did Mama. That dopey Harold, he had to be different. <laughs> Oh, so you're back in circulation again, huh? Maybe, uh, maybe you're being a little too choosy. That's not true. I ask for very little. All I want is a man who'll look up to me and think I'm attractive. Well, I'll see if I can find your crazy midget. <laughs> now, look, Miss Duffy, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get my play ready. Now, John Garfield will be here. John son. Garfield? Is he coming here tonight? Yeah. Oh, Oh, uh, well, I'll, uh, see you later. Yeah. She's gonna get her play ready. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, what a dame. Hello, Archie. What's up? Oh, hello, Sir Heathcliff. Uh, well, I'm putting on a play tonight. A play? Hmm. As the man said when he saw the three oil gushers, well, well, well. <laughs> <clears throat> Archie, may I put my dramatic talent at your disposal? Thank you. I'll be glad to dispose of it. <laughs> In other words, uh, Heathcliff, I cheerfully reject your offer. I can't understand you, Archie. As Betty Grable said to her garter, you should snap at this. <laughs> now look, Heathcliff, there's no part for you tonight. This play of mine is a Mexican play. It takes place in a waterfront dive. A Mexican play? By Jove, I could play a native. You, a native? Yes, with dialect, of course. Thus, hello, Jose. I say, let's have a blooming tortilla. <laughs> now, uh, look, Mexicali Rose. <coughs> the answer is no. Very well, if you want to turn down a man who was the greatest Hamlet in history. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him. Now, please, Heathcliff, not that. Let him go on, Archie. It's a beautiful speech. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him. You know him, too. There are more New Yorks around here.
soon as this place starts, we'll no doubt have a big crowd. Uh, what have we got to feed them? Well, all we got left is hash. Hash? Holy cat. Well, not holy cat. There's some beef in it. <laughs> now, Eddie, that's the kind of stuff that's going to give Duffy's Tavern a bad name. Pardon me, bud. Is this Duffy's Tavern? What does it look like? Like Duffy's Tavern? That's a nasty thing to say. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. It's John Garfield. Well, welcome, Mr. Garfield, and may I uh, sincerely assure you that it is a great humbridge to distinct you this place with an actor of your ilk and posterity. Holy smoke, this is something I've never seen before. What? A guy bumping off a language. <laughs> now, wait a second, Garfield. You have already insulted both me and the joint, and you ain't been here for more than 30 seconds. What's the record? <laughs> I see this man has a biting tongue, and if he ain't careful, I'm gonna bite it. Now, look, John, uh, leave us have a little more noblesse oblige. Uh, after all, this place ain't no ordinary dump. Well, I can see it ain't no ordinary dump. That's right. It's the first one I've ever seen where the rubbish gets up and walks around. John, them are customers. <laughs> and, uh, incidentally, among them is a lot of guys in your own field. Oh, actors? No, convicts. We're going to brandy insults. I can with a scissor to myself. But uh, what do we want to fight for? Come on, uh, sit ye down and uh, have a bite to eat. Eat? Yeah? Say, that might be the answer. <laughs> now, look. Look, Garfield, you ain't going to start that stuff again. I'm sorry, Archie. Well, certainly, we shouldn't start insulting each other. We, we should be friends. After all, you and me are so much alike. Now you're starting it. No, I... I mean it, John. You, you got a lot of my qualities. A lot of the things I got. What? Well, your rugged good looks. Uh, your Devin McCare manner. Uh, your sophisticated charm. Well, how about my New York accent? Well, you've got to remember that I was raised careful. <laughs> but aside to that, we're alike as two bricks in a hut. <laughs> Well, what a pretty speech. And who, pray tell, fair lady, are you? Mm, suddenly he's so polite. This must be John's other Garfield. <laughs> oh, permit me, Mr. Garfield, this is Miss Duffy. Oh, uh, how do you do? Likewise, I'm sure. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Garfield, the thrill you've given me. I haven't got a spine that you haven't tingled. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, this girl makes sense. Go ahead, sugar. Did you see me in Destination Tokyo? Great, huh? Destination Tokyo? Uh, wasn't Cary Grant in that? Cary Grant? Ca well, it's hard to remember every guy in a picture. <laughs> Anyways, um, how'd you like me playing a sailor? Oh, you were wonderful. I remember how you stood beside Cary Grant in the submarine. Oh, Cary looked so big and strong and handsome. <laughs> Yes, I'll never forget how his beautiful eyelashes quivered when he turned his wonderful profile and he gave you an order. You were wonderful. I didn't see the picture myself, but you sound great. Thanks. <laughs> oh, this is such a thrill meeting you, Mr. Garfield. It's uh, almost too exciting. The, the blood just rushes to my head. The blood rushes to your head, huh? Yes. What's the attraction? <laughs> Archie, couldn't you just eat him up? No, thanks. I just had a big supper. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Miss Duffy, you better get back to the cash register. The loose change needs tightening. <clears throat> that, Archie. Well, I'll uh, see you later, Mr. Garfield, in the play. Play? Archie, what play is she talking about? Well, it seems there's a play we're putting on here tonight. Uh, who wrote it? A uh, certain very brilliant and talented young chap. Mm. Uh, you, huh? You notice the resemblance. <laughs> yes, John, among the other talents, I also number the art of drama surgery. I've heard about your plays. Uh, do you write the way you talk? Even better. <laughs> this latest play is really great. It's Life in the Raw. Uh, hi, buddy. You're John Garfield. Yeah. Take <laughs> that, you rat. <laughs> Thank you.
vinegar. What's your matter? Please, watch your language. Mr. Garfield ain't really a mug. I know what I know. I was only kidding. After all, I'm a man of the world. Yeah? Which one? <laughs> God, oh boy, Johnny, kid me back with the... No fooling. I'd love to be one of them gangster pitches shooting off them machine guns. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. The boy, what? Fun, huh? Nah, not so much fun. Those machine guns are murder. Even if firing them in pictures is enough, well, it's enough to make you wince. Mr. Garfield, I don't know the meaning of the word wince. Brave guy, huh? No, I just don't know the meaning of the word <laughs> Us change the conversation to a subject. <coughs> now, John, about this play tonight, uh, this circular here explains everything. Yeah, well, let me see. Tonight, world premiere of Duffy's Repertory Theater. That's theater. Not when it's spelled with a Y. <laughs> Let's see. Tonight's special attraction will be the famous movie actor, Mr. John... Hey, where did you get the effrontery? I copied it off a poster. <laughs> Yep, this will be a great break for you, John. Now, look, you barroom Belasco. Just a second. <coughs> Hello? Hello, Duffy. Uh, well, wait a minute, I'll see. Uh, Eddie, uh, how many customers is here? Uh, let's see, there's one, two, three... Uh, uh, three. <laughs> Hello? Sixty-four. <laughs> huh? Okay, we'll start the play right away. Here, John, now here's the play. Look over your part while I round up the rest of the cast. I'll be right back. Now, wait a minute. Now, don't worry, you'll be great. I'll be right with you. Mm, let's see. A drama on the waterfront entitled Fish and Fantasy. That, that jerk. Yeah, I got an idea who you mean, Mr. Garfield, but don't get upset. Well, where does that Archie get his gall? Oh, Mr. Archie ain't bad. He got nerve and brass and gall and, yep. Well, the answer is you're going to act in this play. Mm, well, uh, did you read it, Eddie? Uh-huh. How is it? Well, I'll tell you. It's the funny thing about Mr. Archie's play. They look pretty bad at first, but... When you get halfway through them, you realize they're worse than you thought. <laughs> but then if you grit your teeth and keep going, when you come to the last line, brother, what a grand and glorious feeling. <laughs> How do I get into these things? I think Warner Brothers must have made me stir crazy. Uh, how does the crowd look? Well, actually, there's only two now. Mr. Callahan's just passed out. <laughs> Hello, Duffy. Huh? Uh, 123 people. <clears throat> yeah, hey, uh, fellas, whoop it up a bit like a mob. Okay, huh? hey, uh, Finnegan, hit the register. Yeah, I'm more champagne. Lady Mendel, what is you doing here? Happy New Year. You hear that, Duffy? Great, huh? I told you. Okay, we're starting to play. That's enough, Finnegan. Boy, what a business I was doing. Well, now you've done enough business. You can retire. <clears throat> okay, now leave us start to play. Trumpets, please. Thank you. Finnegan, will you stop it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we present Fish and Fantasy, wrote by me esteemed self and starring John Garfield. <laughs> Seen a shabby waterfront dive in a little town on the coast of Mexico. Here, fishermen come who sit around drinking their fiery tequila. Coca <laughs> and through the place comes the scent of the trade winds, filling the air with the feeling of mystery, passion, murder, evil, 
and the constant smell of fish. <laughs> but now, leave us meet our characters. I'm the piano player. Fingers, they call me. Once, I was a famous concerto. <laughs> but now, I sit here and play the piano for a few paltry peons a week. I just sit here and play and watch men come and go with their foibles and piccadillos and whatever other fish they have caught. I am Fandango, the gorgeous hostess. I'm beautiful with lips like ripe red pomegranate and raven hair and flashing eyes like two black jelly beans. Men love me madly. They beg for my love. But I just smile and say, Si, si, senor. I am Pierre, a prosperous Mexican fisherman. I love the girl Fandango. She are the sweetheart of I who love him madly. She know? Hey, Archie. Yeah. This play, she stink. <laughs> stink to the scrape. <clears throat> Hello, fingers. Oh, hiya, Fandango. Match. Catch. Oh, missed. Butter fingers. <laughs> uh, what's the matter? You, uh, act nervous, Fandango. What's on your mind? I don't know. I'm thinking of America. You know, fingers, I'm beginning to miss the States. Yeah? Funny, with me, it's the cities. <laughs> When you're a guy like me, you learn to philosophize. Say, Fingers, tell me something. Yeah. You sit there at the piano all day and all night. What do you think about? I often wonder. <laughs> yes, Fandango, there's a comfort in philosophy. Where do you come from, Fingers? Who are you? Please, Fandango, I'd rather you didn't ask that. It's best to bury sleeping dogs. <laughs> Tell me, Fingers. It'll be our secret. Well, sir, <clears throat> once I gave concerts all over the world. Vienna. Bucharest. <laughs> Sitting at me Steinway. Dressed in me black tie and white tails. <laughs> me nickname in them days was Harvey the Rabbit. <laughs> I remember them places. The places ringing with clapter. Paris. Moscow. Wait, you are not... Yes, I am Laszlo Heltakolovich. <laughs> you were the great Heltakolovich? None other. But what happened? Drink, women, gambling, Monte Carlo, the slot machines. <laughs> <laughs> now, here I am, a member of the dregs. Was there uh, a girl? I'd rather not speak of her. It wasn't meant to be. She, she hurt you. It wasn't her fault. She was royalty. I have pheasant blood. <laughs> yes, her old man made her marry a Maja Roger. <laughs> well, that's life. But you got to be a full officer. Well, where amigos? Hasta Miranda. <clears throat> she is I, uh, yeah. Oh, hello, Pierre. Ah, oh, Fandango, she's you, huh? Come kiss me. No. Montevideo, what's the matter, huh? <laughs> Here I am, a great fisherman, and this bag on my shoulders, I have a 200 pounder mackerel, a 50 pounder tuna, 60 flounders. Why, you know, want to kiss me? I don't know. There's something about you. <laughs> Sacramento, you turning me down, a man who catch you 400 pounds of fish? That's a whole of a catch. <laughs> Fandango, uh, why don't you marry Pierre here? I hate him. Azusa, you love fingers, huh? I kill him. Look out, fingers. He's got a gun. Semper Fidelis. Hi, <laughs> hey, guy. If she can't have she, nobody else she have him. Stand back. <laughs> Missed me. <laughs> but I don't mind... 
That's philosophy. But the, this time, uh, this time I get you. Ouch! He got me. Well, Fandango, I guess... I guess this is curtains for fingers. What goes on here? Who are you? I am the prefix of police. <laughs> I had a shot here. Fingers, who shot you? I ain't talking. Well, I'll find out who shot you. Let me think. Uh, hey, yo, you with that smoking gun in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> what are you trying to do, start a fire? <laughs> well, I'm going out to check up. I'll be back. Say, uh, say, fingers. What? Sorry I have to kill you, kiddo. No hard feelings, Pierre. It's just the brakes. You've got to be a philosopher. Wait. Fingers, before you go, there's something I've got to tell you. What? I am her daughter. You? Boita's daughter? <laughs> you the daughter of the woman I love? Yes. My real name is Mercedes de Monticello Schmolhausen. <laughs> oh, this is too much. Wait. Just a second. Leave me look at your arm. Here. Eat good cat. The Monticello Schmolhausen vaccination. <laughs> so you are Bertha's daughter. Yes. Hmm. The daughter of Bertha de Monticello Schmolhausen meets and loves the great concerto, Laszlo Helpikalovich in Mexico, just as he is dying. Yes. What a small world. Well, heavens to Betsy... I guess you got to be a full officer. Well, Eddie, how'd the crowd like it? I don't know. They all went over to Grogan's. <laughs> Grogan's, huh? Well, what's doing over at Grogan's? Oh, they got a crummy burlesque show there, John, with a lot of naked dames. Oh, I'll see you later. Now, wait a minute. A guy like John Garfield can't be seen in a place like that. I guess you're right. Um, Eddie, uh, run over to Grogan's and reserve a table for Pierre the Fisherman. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to leave Duffy's Tavern for this evening. But let's meet here again at the same time next week. And if you have a half hour next Friday uh, evening... Just a the... second, Mr. Roy. I think I'd better call Duffy and confess to him that this repertory company of mine was a flop. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Duffy. Put Duffy on the phone. You what? He went over to Grogan's. Oh, that Duffy. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.